Welcome to my channel, friends. All right, let's get crafting. I am so excited about this project because we are going to be doing something that is so high end and that's trending all over the place online right now for such an affordable budget. We're going to take these ping pong balls and this 3D wreath form and we are going to turn them into a wood beautiful floral wreath. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off these three extra rings. We're going to save them for another project on another day because I have a really cute idea for those two. But we're going to take this wire that's pointing in. There's two of them. One of them we're going to pop right off by just wiggling it back and forth. And the other one we're going to keep because towards the end we're going to use that to bring the wire form back together. And I'll show you what I mean towards the end of this project. But what we want to do is up at the top where we pop that one off, make sure you smooth it back out into being that round shape. And then at the bottom, go ahead and cut it right here on this part. So that way we can thread on all of our ping pong balls. So at this point, you're going to need four packs of these. Go ahead and take them out and you are going to cut holes in them by using your craft knife and I'm going to do a hole on opposite sides of each other. So I poked one hole and then I'm going to turn it around on the other side and then poke another hole. Now make sure when you're poking your holes that you don't make them so big that it's going to cause it to not be nice and tight on the wire, but don't make them too small because when you get to the top where you've cut off that other piece, that wire that was coming in, it doesn't get stuck because it can cause it to want to not let it thread through. So keep that in mind. The other thing I wanted to say to keep in mind with is that these are ping pong balls, so don't squeeze them too tight while you're poking your holes in them. They do pop back out if you do squeeze them too tight, but just keep that in mind as you're working with them. So once you start threading everything on, you're going to start to see right away that that really popular trending wreath that is like $50, I think almost to $100 depending on who's selling it because those wreaths have wooden larger balls that we've been seeing a lot in home decor, but these are really large ones. I just thought we could do this so much cheaper or so much more affordable with these ping pong balls that will give us the look and it will be totally beautiful and fine on our front doors hanging up and it will stand the test of time because it's a ping pong ball. As we go through all of them and we're puncturing our holes, make sure you do four cases of these ping pong balls and then at that point you're going to go ahead and take your wires. You're going to create a little loop just like you saw there and then it hooks right on to that wire that we did not cut off that's pointing in so you can see that it's all connected. And then the last one you're going to go ahead and just hot glue it in place. Now at this point, you can see here that we're going to move on to our florals and you don't have to go so spring. You definitely can go more summer if you want. Now at this point, you can see that I took the ping pong balls and the wreath outside and I spray painted them a taupey color so that way I can get rid of the white and even the wordage that's on that ball. And we're going to just start dry brushing on some brown paint and I did about four coats of this brown paint because I wanted to make them look as natural as possible to make them look like wood. Take your time. Don't rush through this. This is actually a really fun thing to do. I personally enjoy dry brushing on things. So I'm just lightly putting on four coats, taking my time, and then I'm going to come in with a different tint of brown. And then I'm even going to come in with this creamy off white color which will add a little more texture and depth to them and make them really look like they are the real thing and people will not be able to tell that these are ping pong balls and that you spent about six dollars to make this versus fifty dollars to a hundred dollars to buy it so at this point we're going to take some foam core you can see that i cut them down really thin really thin slices of it and i want you to almost think of it like we're making a sandwich at this point because we are going to sandwich the wire in between two pieces of foam core board so i've got to get enough that will go across the bottom part of the wreath and I'm just taking my pliers and creating a little space to be able to sandwich the wire up in there 
and I'm going to glue that on and then I'm going to come on the other side of the wire, the top part where we're going to be putting all of our florals into and I'm going to just glue one on and sandwich it in. That way so the back side, it, the foam is not going to fall off the wire because it's going to want to, especially if you have it on your front door and you live in a place where you get high winds. Here in Missouri, during the springtime, we get a lot of high winds, which is why you hear a lot of tornado reports. So once you've got your foam all on, go ahead and start putting on your flowers. I decided, like I said, to go with a kind of spring going into summer look. So I'm using some white, green, pops of yellow, and then a darker couple shades of pink. And then I simply added on a ribbon and a couple other ones that are you know, a little more texture and height, and you are all set to hang it up. Our next DIY is going to be using this sign from the Dollar Tree. Now we're not going to be using the side that has the glitter. I ended up covering the back side of it with some foam core. You'll see it towards the end. But on the wood side that was blank, I'm going to paint that a nice gray color. And then I'm dry brushing on lines. Now this is the coolest thing about this project is that it is super easy to do and the result is so pretty. Now you can see here that we want to get that streaky look. So like I said, I'm just very lightly adding some paint and I'm just going back and forth because we're creating a natural buffalo check. So you can see that where they cross up, the white is a little bit brighter. And then on those in-betweens where the lines don't cross, it's got that lighter color of the white and it just looks so cool. So here I am, I'm at the very end of my little signboard and I'm just going to now add on this cute darling wreath with some boxwood. I wrapped a rope around it, flipped it around added some hot glue and then to give it a nice finished look I'm adding some of this burlap ribbon at the back to really finish that and then on the front I'm just going to add a couple stickers from the Dollar Tree I love this this thing cost me almost nothing to make and it looks so beautiful This next DIY, I am so excited to show you all to the Dollar Tree. They're selling these thicker pieces of wood in different shapes. So I'm gonna use two of them with a plunger stick and we're gonna cut it down. And once I've got that done, I'm gonna take my drill and drill a hole right in the center of the two circles that we have here. And then I'm also gonna drill into the two ends of the dowel from the plunger stick. So that way when we put it together, they will go in really easy. So here I am, I'm just using <laughs> these little crates from the Dollar Tree to prop them up so I don't drill into my desk. And then I'm going to just simply screw that right into place. Now I, I sew, I don't know if you all know that, but I love to sew, I've been sewing since I was really little. And so one of the things I have always loved are old spools. And these are those old spools that you're seeing sometimes on Pinterest. And I thought it would be so fun to give you all a printable if you can find and track down these thick pieces of wood at the Dollar Tree. I just thought it would be so cute to make these into a vintage giant spool that has that collector's feel to it. I, I really love the idea of cottage farmhouse because Whenever I would go into any type of home that was a cottage farmhouse type feel, there's a lot of collector's items in those types of homes. Just a lot of things to remember the past and I thought this would be so cool to do this as a DIY for you all today. So now what I'm doing is I cut them out and I'm distressing my tags that I'm making for these spools as well as the actual spool itself. And then we're just going to Mod Podge on those labels on the top and the bottom so it looks like an old vintage spool. I just think that these are so cute. And then you can use whatever you want, ribbon, rope yarn, I, whatever you want to wrap around them. These are so easy to make and you can make 
each spool for about because you've got the two wood blocks that's a dollar and then the the dowel you can use one for both of them so I'll say that it was probably like three dollars to make and then you wrap whatever ribbon around it you want so here I am with my ribbon I thought it would be really cute to finish it off by putting in some of my straight pins from my sewing box and I just love how this turned out you can make so many of these these could be so cute all stacked on a hutch a shelf These are the supplies we're going to be using for our project. A galvanized tin bucket from the Dollar Tree as well as these wood beads that they have in their craft section. Now when you go to take off the handle, I have realized that this wire on this bucket was actually really, really strong, well quality wire. So when you're taking it off, just make sure you don't bend your bucket too rough because it can cause an issue with the original punch holes to rip or tear. But you're going to want to make sure that the end of this handle is straight as possible. So what I did, I actually just cut off the original bend fold area so that that way I had a nice clean line to be able to fish on all of these beads. So I'm going to use a medium and a large and I'm going to just keep going back and forth in the two sizes until I get to the very end of my wire. This part is really fun and easy to do and I found that I had extra beads left over which was really great. So at this point when you're finishing putting them all on you're going to want to make sure you have about an inch at the very bottom of your handle because you need to be able to put that back on the bucket to bend the wires in. Another tip is when you get to the end and you have that inch, go ahead and just bend in those wires on the end. Don't bend them all the way up, but just enough to be able to hold the beads in place while you're bending everything together. So you can see here that I bent it first a little bit, put it on, and then now I'm tightening the rest to make sure it all fits on there nicely. Then at this point, once your wires are nice and tight and snug on there, you can go ahead and move on to the next step which is going to be taking it outside and giving a nice coat of spray paint. Once everything is nice and dry, go ahead and take three different shades of brown. I'm using a light, a medium, and a dark. And we're gonna use the first one, the lightest one, to coat all of the beads and all the crevices all the way over the whole thing. You're gonna do it on both of the sides. This is gonna create a really nice wood look when you have these three different tones versus just only painting it one color, which will make them look like they're not real and they just were painted. Here I am, I'm using a dry brush technique for the next color up. I'm just lightly brushing it on and using a napkin to wipe off anything that's too saturated on my paintbrush. And I'm just taking my time going over it and dabbing on different tints and shades of the brown because this will really make it look just like wood. Now at this point we are going to decorate the bucket. I think this is so cute. I have seen some of these buckets online with this really cute buffalo check or stripes or gingham on it and they're so expensive. I could not believe it and when I realized wait a second I can use the bucket from the Dollar Tree I knew that this would be perfect. So at this point we're going to just take a nice angled paintbrush and we are going to paint black lines and friends you could do this in any color you want i thought this could be really cute to do this exact same diy but maybe in christmas red or christmas green and that could be really pretty too so here i am i'm just painting on my nice thick lines and once i've gotten all the way around the bucket i'm gonna now reverse the other direction i do recommend letting it dry just a tiny bit at this point, once I got all the way around, it was dry enough to be able to go because otherwise you could create some streak lines and that won't look so good. But remember, you don't have to do this super perfect. I'm just freehanding this. If you want to use painter's tape to make it look really clean and crisp, you can totally do that. But I was going for a little bit more of a wonky or playful look to it. I didn't want it to be too 
crisp on the lines because I like the idea of it being, like I said, just a little more wonky. So now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and go in and add in my gray so that that way I can have a really pretty buffalo check look. So I'm just going on all of the areas that are not connecting points. And I realized afterwards, I probably could have done the gray lines first and then added the black. I probably would have had a lot less to paint. So just keep that in mind, whatever colors you're working with, the lighter color is the one that actually needs to be seen the most. Now we're gonna move on to a different size bucket from the Dollar Tree. This one I also spray painted on the outside. I left the inside where it's galvanized. I thought that would be really cute. And I'm gonna use a smaller brush. The reason why I'm gonna be doing this one is because I wanna show you how just switching up the brush size can really change the look of a bucket. If you wanna have a straighter line, you can totally use painter's tape, but I want you to see how just me going quickly over the bucket, what a cute look this can be too. And if you have any mess ups, just take a wipey and wipe it off. When you're using a spray paint as the base, it allows you to wipe it away nicely. So once I've gotten all the way around, I'm now going to switch my direction and I'm going to create my lines going the other way. I really loved doing this. I thought this was so therapeutic and just calming and I had so much fun just taking my time going around. Now the trick with painting a line around in a circle, you're gonna wanna keep your pinky in the same exact spot as you're going because that's gonna give you the nice spacing that you need as you're turning your bucket and that will keep your line straight. So you can see here, I keep using my pinky as I'm going. I keep putting it out and touching it out. And then as I get further and further over, I just kind of keep eyeballing it at this point, but because I, I had a really good jump point, from the bottom where I try to keep the line as straight as possible. And as you keep moving up the bucket, it just gets cuter and cuter as you go. Now we could leave it like this or we could add a little bit more detail to it. But again, can you imagine if you did this with red, how cute this could be for Christmas time? Or if you decided to do different colors and created more of a plaid look to the bucket, there are so many cute things you can do with these buckets from the Dollar Tree and they're just only a dollar. So this is the point we're gonna add some twine around the handles, just twist it around and around and glue it down into place to have a nice completed cute handle and your buckets are ready to be displayed. Our last DIY is going to be using this tote bag that you can get from the Dollar Tree and this large 11 by 14 frame. So what we're doing is we're just gonna take that fabric with that really pretty printing on it and we're just gonna simply pull it nice and tight around the backing of the frame and glue it all down into place. This is the easiest thing to do and then you're just gonna pop it right back in and push down your tabs and I just love how it looks in this frame. It fits perfectly. That's it for today and I hope you enjoyed my projects. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you click the subscribe button if you enjoyed the content from today. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of all of these projects that I did today. And until the next episode, bye friends.